Hello and welcome to Africa Today. I am Mike Okwache. The European Union's economic relationship with Africa can be traced back to the 1958 Treaty of Rome. On France's instance, an agreement was reached amongst the six European Economic Commission nations to provide aid via a funding instrument known as the European Development Fund, as well as access to European markets for a selection of goods. Now, when African nations started gaining independence in the 1960s, there was a hope that an equal partnership would form. When the first European Union EU AU summit was held in 2000, some once again, there was promise for a genuine partnership. But years later, it is clear that both continents still have not completely escaped the burden of their historical relationship. Now, what is your take on the EU AU partnership? You can share your thoughts with us on Twitter at TVC Africa Today or send an email to Africa Today at at tvcnews.tv. We'll take this report now and Africa Today will be right back. Thanks for joining us. African and European leaders on Wednesday head into Brussels for a key summit. 13 EU nations and two of African states gathered for crisis talks on the escalating violence in the Central African Republic. About 80 nations gathered for the key summit. Illegal migration, Conflicts and terrorism are top issues to be discussed at the gathering. This comes a day after the European Union announced the launch of a rare military mission to restore peace in the Central African Republic. The launch, which is also the EU's first major ground operation in six years, is to help French and African peacekeepers end months of escalating Christian Muslim violence in the country. The institutional relation between Europe and, and Africa um, dates back to the early 20s when the Organization for African Unity was transformed into an African Union. And from the very beginning of the AU, the EU has very much supported this process of uh, continental uh, union. Uh, we ourselves are in the process of creating a continental uh, union in Europe and we, we do believe uh, that uh, it is a, a very good uh, development in uh, African Unity. Trade will also take center stage at the summit. It has been another cause of tension for several years as the two parties continue to struggle to agree on trade deals. Both are now seeking to enter a partnership of equals with trade and investment playing a key role, thus giving Africa better access to EU markets. A key issue in consequence at the summit will be illegal migration as the EU offers to open its borders to legal migrants, students and business people. Amina Hamid, Africa Today. Right, Africa's relationship with Europe is deeply rooted in the his history of both continents. But the continents still feel the need to reassure each other that they are friends. The 2014 EU-AU summit in Brussels is themed investing in people, prosperity and peace. And to discuss the partnership, we have Clem Bay, a media executive with us in the studio. It's good to have you join us today. Welcome to Africa Today. Uh, good evening, Mike. All right. Uh, and then also joining us uh, on phone from South Africa, we have Tom Wheeler, a former South African ambassador to Turkey. Uh, he'll be joining us later on on the program. Now, let, let, let's start it this way. When we talk about the economic or social or political any relationship between the continent of Africa and the continent of Europe, so many people feel it is skewed towards the benefit of Europe and nothing else. What's your assessment from that perspective? Well, they would not be far from being correct because it has to be skewed because of uh, historical things. It's asymmetrical. Right. They had the power. They were the colonial rulers mm. and uh, we were the colonial subjects. Mm. So to that extent, it is, it, is, it is correct. But it need not be so. It can be a win-win partnership. But the thing is that nations generally are very selfish. Uh, w what, they w what you will see as your own interest, they will not see as something that is of interest to them. I mean, I know that even in Britain, for example, a lot of people are making a lot of noise that why should Britain be concerned about what happens in any African country? They should focus on, um, on Crimea, mm -hmm. on Ukraine, and other things like that. But you see, the snag is that when there are some issues happen, they are infectious or they are contagious. Um, if you take, for instance, just the, the matter of maybe 
polio or something like that. If you say, I'm not interested, uh, a plague on their houses, polio can kill them. But that's not going to happen because polio cannot be contained. It's not a silo. It's not, we're not a silo. Mm -hmm. I mean, people will breathe, people will travel, mm -hmm. and they're going to get in people touch with mingle, it. Of yeah, people will mingle. Mm -hmm. So you could go on and on about other issues, uh, even terrorism. Now, if you say, well, we're not concerned, whatever Boko Haram does in Nigeria is just Nigeria's problem. It doesn't concern us. But you see, immediately you lower your guard and you accept that certain parts of the world can suffer. Um, um, if you're so cynical and say it doesn't matter, anything can happen to them, well, pretty soon it will be knocking at your door. Oh, I see. <laughs> that, that's, that's how we're connected in the web of anything yes. that happens here can It can happen elsewhere. It can have, well. affect the other part. All, all right, let's narrow it down to the ongoing uh, EU-AU summit in Brussels. Yes. Now, so many cannot miss the African economists are still very um, skeptical about what could be the outcome of such kind of a, a, a summit. Why, why would such kind of skepticism be uh, in the minds of people? Well, there has to be skepticism because take, for instance, Nigeria. Unfortunately, we didn't report a lot about it locally. Mm -hmm. At the last ECOWAS summit, Nigeria opposed certain things that were going to be agreed on mm -hmm. in Brussels because Nigeria felt that if it agreed with those things, it would affect our attempt to become an industrial nation, okay. an industrialized nation. It's going to affect our you know, albeit poor level of manufacturing and so on and so forth. And when you consider that we already have so many disadvantages with our manufacturing, uh, infrastructure is completely dreadful. Uh, you see that if we allowed the type of thing they were going to agree, it will only perpetuate the fact that we would never become a manufacturing nation. So yeah, but, it, but if, if there are such kind of fears, mm. why would, okay, you cited Nigeria, for instance. Yes. If Nigeria is one of the countries like that, then certainly other African countries would, would uh, nurse the same kind of fear. Yes. But if they are nursing that kind of fear, why wouldn't they go ahead to ensure they, they make sure there is um, infrastructure on ground and all the, all the different uh, yeah, Those are the issues. That, you see, we, we must continue to talk. Mm. We may never agree on everything. We may not see eye to eye 100%. But there would be issues that bring us together. I mean, you're aware that today they were talking about Central African Republic. We are already, I think it was mentioned in news, we have 6,000 African Union troops and then we have 2,000 French troops and other European nations want to contribute another 1,000. The whole idea is that when you get people working together like that, they get a buy-in even sentimentally because you, you do not want to see any part of the globe in which people are killed just because of the particular religion that they've, uh, they've chosen to uh, adhere to. Mm. So those are issues that we always have to be of interest. We might not agree on every, every matter of detail. And if I may add, take for instance, Botswana and a few other countries that used to do a lot of beef exports to the European Union, especially Zimbabwe. I don't know how much they do now because Zimbabwe has a lot of issues with the European mm. Union because of Mugabe. Mm. But in the 80s, uh, the Zimbabwean beef was available in Europe. And now you have uh, possibly from Morocco, from North African countries, you have some of their agri products, especially their oranges and things like that, they are available in Europe. And as part of the, the concessions that are granted as part of all these agreements, it's good for us to continue to talk. There is some benefit of it, but we must be aware that it's not everything that they're going to offer us. Some might be invitation to free poison, and we, we have an option to say, no, we're not taking this poison. <laughs> okay, right. we'll, we'll come back to this. Now, joining us from South Africa is Tom Wheeler, a former diplomat uh, and South African diplomat. Now, Tom, is good to have you join us on Africa Today. Now, what is your reaction as regards uh, Jacob Zuma and Robert Mugabe boycotting the AU-EU summit in Brussels? Well, I think the first reaction in South Africa yesterday uh, was that this was an April Fool's message. But uh, we soon realized that it was quite serious. Uh, I think that it, uh, the decision of Jacob Zuma not to go was not well received because uh, he was associating himself with Robert Mugabe. And we know that uh, Robert Mugabe has been on a, a, um, 
a, a, a list of uh, people that are subject to sanctions by the EU for quite some time. Now, the whole thing seems so childish because Mugabe wouldn't go because his wife wouldn't get a visa uh, to go shopping. So, uh, you know, and then for Zuma to join in, I think uh, we, we didn't take this very kindly. All right. If, if for instance, Zuma is not attending this summit, if the resolutions are made at the summit, would he accept that it becomes binding on his country? Well, uh, as the foreign minister and the trade and industry minister will be attending, okay. so they will be part of the conversation and of the negotiations. So yes, I expect he would. Uh, I. Uh, I mean, I can't really say with absolute certainty because one of the issues to be discussed are the so-called EPAs, the Economic Partnership Agreement. And that has been a problem in the Sadiq region because countries like Botswana and Namibia are very keen to sign this. South Africa has not. South Africa has a trade development and something else partnership agreement with the EU, which was signed in 1999. So we really don't need this. And uh, so there's been some tension within SADC itself about the EPAs. And uh, so it remains to be seen what happens on that one. All right. So, so many people still feel that the relationship between Europe and Africa is not mutual. What, what's your assessment on that? Well, uh, you know, I think the Europeans have been at a great a pain to say that this is, uh, you know, this is not so. But it is a fact that uh, Europe is both the biggest trading partner. Europe to God, together is the biggest trading partner of Africa and from Africa, but also the biggest uh, development uh, development partnership, uh, the biggest contributor development in Africa, a, a large funder of the African Union, and many countries receive development assistance from Europe. So there is a relationship, uh, perhaps it's not always, you know, uh, uh, perfect. All right, thank you very much and, uh, for your time. Stay on the line, we'll get back to you again uh, shortly, Tom Wheeler. Now, although the EU-Africa relationship has evolved over the years and moved on from its exchange of raw materials for manufactured goods, Disagreements remain as to whether it is a relationship of equals or not. We'll take a quick break and Africa Today will return shortly. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us on Africa Today. The event is in Brussels, Belgium, and it involves two unions, the EU and the EU, with one vision, to invest in people, prosperity and peace. But this theme cannot debate itself without the expected 80 countries in attendance. And we're still looking at the AU-EU Partnership Summit in Brussels, and we still have Clem Baye in the studio. Now, let's, let's talk about the from the fears people nurse, whether Africans or Europeans or Asians, concerning the relationship between Africa and Europe on, on, as, as far as that is concerned. Now, if the relationship is not mutual, mm -hmm. who do we hold responsible? No, you see, I, I, I think, in my view, with mm -hmm. respect, I, I sh we should not digress from it. What are the issues that are outstanding, mm -hmm. that are causing some problem yeah. now? It has to do with, take Morocco. Mm. Morocco has withdrawn from the African Union yeah. because it says the African countries recognize the SAD as uh, Arab Democratic Republic. Mm. All right, so Morocco is in effect a colonial power in Africa. Mm. Now it's withdrawn, but Morocco is invited to this conference. Mm. Meanwhile, SADR is not invited. Okay, now. Um, then you have the personal, personality issues that have to do with uh, President Robert Mugabe, mm -hmm. who at 90 is still in power, mm -hmm. haven't been in power since 1980. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, he is upset because his wife was not given a, 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 a visa, visa to, to go to uh, Europe, so he's not going. And then Jacob Zuma of South Africa says, you cannot be telling us who to come and who not to come. Mm -hmm. See, there are issues of governance. Mm -hmm. 
it, we would always have to disagree because our African leaders, with respect, need to be better in their leadership attitude, in their attitude to leadership, in their, lead, in their attitude to the people that they govern, who they claim they have been voted them into power. Yeah. Now, the EU is moving ahead in some of these areas, and um, there will always be disagreement. That's not too bad. But then you also have issues where we have to cooperate. Uh, the last uh, meeting, I think, was held in Tripoli when Gaddafi was still in power. That was four years ago when Gaddafi was still in power. Gaddafi has since left. And when he left, why is the Europeans were happy? They thought they had gotten rid of a tyrant, a dictator. But what actually happens is that there is a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the small arms and the rest of them and the restive people that were held on the check by him because he controlled the fringes of the Sahara right up to our own borders mm -hmm. have been set loose. It is, it is some of those people and some of those arms that are available for some of the things that are happening in Nigeria, in Mali, and in some other West Central African, African countries. Republic, South yes. Sudan and and Central, so. Central African yeah. Republic. Yeah. All right, but if we have to talk about the ideals, yeah. what, what is supposed to be the ideal relationship economically and socially or maybe even politically between the, both continents? Well, the ideal relationship, first of all, is that bo both continents, and especially in Africa, mm. our leaders rule very well, they govern very well. If our leaders are governing very well, nobody is going to drag you from just before some international court in The Hague. Mm. When our institutions are defunct and derelict, uh, our institutions are not allowed to perform the role, when your, your justice, your, your, your judiciary, and your criminal justice system mm. does not allow you to be able to call a political person to account. Then they start talking about international criminal court in, uh, in The Hague. Mm -hmm. If you were doing the right thing, nobody would talk about that because African leaders get upset. They say, why is it that of all the people that are brought, dragged before this is mainly African leaders? Well, who would have taken care of Charles Taylor in Liberia, for example? Yeah. <laughs> or who's going to handle the gentleman in Sudan? I mean, those are the issues. It's because we are failing in some areas. That's why it, we now have to go out to go and look for solutions to problems which could have been homegrown mm. if we had agreed to deal with those issues. Okay. So I don't think that, that uh, the disagreement is necessarily always bad. It's good for some healthy disagreement. Okay. Oh, that's fine. All right, we still have uh, Tom Willard on the line. Now, the EU and indeed other Western donors have concerns with respect to China's response in Africa. Why should that be? I suppose it's commercial competition that, uh, that they are interested in selling their goods, uh, trading relationships with African countries, and China is a competitor. But so, is, so are other countries, so is the United States and so on. So I think because Chinese goods tend to be cheaper, they are probably concerned that they will lose some of their market share. All right. With, with the emergence of uh, uh, economic uh, organizations like the BRICS and the MINS and so on, do you think it threatens uh, the relationship between Europe and Africa precisely? I don't think it needs to. It will depend on the various individual countries because... Uh, you know, the relationship is not necessarily between Europe and Africa, it's between European countries and African countries. And uh, different countries have different interests and relationships. So it's, uh, it, it, you can't uh, just throw everybody in one uh, bunch and say this is the way it's going to be. Uh, South Africa, as an African country, is very proud to be in the BRICS, but it's certainly... Uh, uh, China is, uh, as an individual country, South Africa's largest trading partner. But Europe, is, as a combined, is South Africa's largest trading partner, and I'm sure that applies to many other African countries too. All right. To, to what extent does the joint uh, AU-EU strategy create opportunities for a genuine partnership between Africa and Europe? I think that is the intention of the, uh, of the strategy, uh, they say that the the purpose of the or the, the, the yeah the purpose of this uh, the summit is uh, people peace and prosperity. So I think that cuts both ways. Africa is a um, African countries are the fastest growing economies in the world at the moment, it's growing middle class, growing markets, and the Europeans 
who have been going through a pretty solid time since the financial crisis hit in 2008, want to be part of that. So I think uh, there's something in it for both sides as long as they play the game cautiously and uh, with good faith. All right, let me ask, what are, what, are, what are the seeming challenges that are going to be in the next couple of years, talking about trade between Europe and Africa? Do you see any challenges in the future? Well, I think that there are, uh, uh, you know, the Europeans want uh, free, tariff-free access to African uh, markets, and I think there's some resistance to that. You know, the Americans have something called AGOA, African Growth and Opportunity Act, which allows duty-free access of African goods into the United States. But they don't have tariff-free uh, access into Africa for American goods. So, uh, and I think the same would probably apply very much to China and other, other, other countries outside Europe. So the uh, Europeans are asking something more from Africa than they are giving to other people. And I think this may be an area of contention. All right, thank you very much for your contribution on Africa Today. Thank you. Right, <clears throat> he, he talked about uh, a market in Europe for, no market in Europe and in America for Africa. But let, let me take it from what he said last. Yeah. Now, if we have more of America, or we're talking about <laughs> Europe anyway, yeah. but if we have more of the Western market yeah. in Africa than yeah. having the African market in Europe, yeah. how concerned should African leaders be in trying to change the trend? We should be concerned because the more you can export your, your goods, the more, you, the better for your ec economy. Mm. Uh, it's an issue that has to be looked at because um, trade, about 40% of Africa's trade is with Europe, mm -hmm. you know, between 38 and 40%, either, either way. Mm -hmm. Now, which means that there's that commercial link, mm -hmm. but a lot of it does not benefit Africa because a lot of it has to do with unprocessed things. Mm -hmm. It has to do with uh, either oil of diamonds or iron ore or something like that that you export without product. Now, when you are able to add something, add value to a product, mm -hmm. it means that you are able to employ more people. It means that you, uh, your retention capacity within your economy is better. But as it is today, we are still essentially supplier of raw materials mm -hmm. to, to Europe. And that's not good enough. And as Africans, we must continue to fight and resist it. It doesn't matter how long it takes. If it's only 5% increment this year, we look forward to another 7%, maybe in another couple of years. Right. But African leaders must make sure that we are not left always carrying the can. All right. Now, in, in tangible terms, if I have to draw from just what you just said now, if, if all African countries have decide, decide now to, to let's change this trend, what steps do you think they should take? in changing the trends? Well, some of them have to do with the fact that, I mean, the ambassador mentioned the AGOA, African Growth Opportunities yep. Act. Um, we do not have the equivalent of it from Europe, for instance. I mean, there are other things that Europe does, but we should not always think that all Africans do is to go with a begging bowl and say, give us aid. I mean, if we're able to trade uh, and trade at fairly equal terms, it is much better for us. And already we, we have a strong disadvantage because of our infrastructure, which I, I had mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But if, if the Europeans will say that truly we are their partners, if we're not their slaves, then it should be a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time it seems that it has to do more with, okay, we'll call you a partner, but we'll tell you how you're going to be a partner. <laughs> All right. Does Africa stand to learn anything from this? We, we would always learn something. Mm. Later in, in, in this year, there's going to be uh, Africa-Japan um, meeting. Okay. Later in the year, too, there's going to be Africa-United States meeting. Mm. It is good now that we're all coming together. Uh, when we come together, we aggregate our interests and fight for our interests at various levels, either is at uh, WTO mm. or is at any other place uh, that we go and fight for our interests and ensure that our interests are not always put on the back burner, right. but that they are brought to the front burner as much as we can. Okay.
Clem Bayer, thank you very much for coming in Africa today. Thank, my thank you. Thanks, yeah. uh, we also thank Ambassador Tom Wheeler for joining us from South Africa. Now, economic scholars believe that Europe has seen its role in Africa decrease and it has missed good opportunities to benefit from Africa's boom. Now, while old Europe keeps struggling with growth and high unemployment, Africa has become a pre-emerging continent. In the footsteps of Asia, it has experienced sustained high economic growth around 5% over the past decade. This is why they think it is time to rebalance the Europe-Africa relations. And while they get, it, uh, get at it, we hope all will be fair and square at the end of the day. That's our show for today. Don't forget to watch previous episodes of the show on youtube.com forward slash TVC Africa today. And until the next one, I am Mike Okwache. And don't forget, this is Africa. Bye for now.